met a man the other day that shared with me that he felt he was a total failure. That God had given up on him. And I listened to him as tears got in my eyes because I saw what I used to be in him. And I let him know God is faithful. And he will not leave you where you are. Do not allow society to make you turn away from your God or whatever you're going through. If he charged you to do a calling, he'll see it through. Praise the Lord. This morning, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Luke, St. Luke. Yeah, 24th chapter. I'm going to start reading at the 13th verse. I won't be very long, but I definitely won't be in no hurry. You get there, say amen, 24, 13. And it reads, now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed, reason that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes re were res restrained so that they did not know him. And he said unto them, what kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one of those whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not known these things which have happened these, these three days? And he said to them, What things? And they said unto him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and all rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel indeed. Besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and a certain woman of our company arrived at the tomb and was astonished when she did uh, find his body and was saying that they had also seen in a vision angels who said he was alive. And all the certain those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said unto them, O foolish ones, O slow of heart, Believe in all that the prophets have spoken are not the Christ to have suffered these things and to be and to enter into his glory. And beginning at Moses and at all the prophets, he expounded unto them the scriptures and these things concerning him. Then they drew near the village where they were going, and they and he indicated that he would have gone further, but they constrained him and saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in and stayed with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? I want to talk to you this morning for a subject going in the wrong direction. <laughs> going in the wrong direction. After the death of Jesus, his followers had accepted that death had won. They now began to live in fear, and their expectations had been destroyed, and their leader is now dead. Luke records the events after Jesus' body was laid in a borrowed tomb belonging to Joseph of Arimathea, a council member. He was of the Jews himself, 
who followed Jesus and his teaching. This man was the one that went to Pilate and he had asked for the body of Jesus that he may wrap him up and take him and lay him in his tomb. Luke also records that the women came to the tomb on a Sunday morning. And when they came to the tomb, they were conversing with themselves. Who will roll away the stone for us? And upon approaching it, they see the stone removed. And they, they wonder and one looks in. And the Bible says that the angels told her, they said, who do we do come in and look? Because we know whom thou seekest. Thou seekest Jesus of Nazareth? Look at here. He is not here. Look where they laid him. I believe he told him, he said, go and tell his disciples, meet him in Galilee. If this was not enough of the betrayal and the doubt that they had upon Jesus, we even read in the book of John where Doubting Thomas said that after he had appeared to the 11 disciples, to, he, they, to 10 disciples, and John, Thomas was not there, and the Bible says that Thomas came after they had, he had left and said, except I put my hand in his side and I touch the wounds where he was wounded, I will not believe him. After he died and had shared with them over and over again that the son of man must be put to death and on the third day he will rise again. After he had told them over and over again, nobody takes my life, I'll lay it down. And I'll pick it up again. Isn't this something how we can find ourselves as these brothers walking on the road to Emmaus was in the opposite direction of Galilee? Going the wrong way because when you think that the end has come upon you, you have a tendency to respond in a negative, downhearted way. Going in the wrong direction. Paul is very clear for those of us that confess Jesus Christ to be our Lord and Savior. Paul is very clear in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th verse, 15th chapter, 13th uh, and the, to the 17th verse. He says, if, if Jesus had not been risen from the dead, then our religion, our preaching, our teaching, our hoping, our praying, our faith is all in vain. Everything we've done to this point means nothing. Coming in here and fanning like you're doing is a waste of your time. If Jesus had not risen from the grave, then all that we preach in the 66 books, all that we proclaim in the gospels and in the epistles is a waste of time. Many people have come up with all different scenarios that why he couldn't have been risen from the dead. Some say that, and it's written in the Bible, that they came and they stole him. And they took him away somewhere. It's also said that maybe someone is camouflaged and there's somebody that looked like him. It's also saying that it, it, it was not him. But how in the world can he not be him when he got the scars? You can't camouflage. I don't care how you want me to look like you. You're not putting no nail in my hand. No, 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 they're, they're. But how can we exclude or get rid of the fact that Jesus rose from the dead? Had he not rose from the dead, everybody in here probably would be dead. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Not fit to live and wasn't ready to die. But yet God covered you when you were in sin. Not when you cleaned up, got up, and straightened up. God covered you when you were messed up. Oh, praise God's name. The fact of it is that God gave us a fresh start, a new beginning. It's a fact, I'm telling you. It's a risen fact that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Oh, when I think about the times when I thought in my life or you thought in your life that something had happened and it was because of your awareness that you escaped danger, you are sadly mistaken. It was the power of God and the encamping of his angels that have kept you all of your life and will keep you until you leave here. And all the things that you've gone through in life, it is that same power of God that's going to deliver you to the place that you want to be. 
If Jesus had not died and risen from the grave, then sin would have dominion over you. You didn't stop sinning because you were smart. You didn't stop sinning because you could remember the Bible. You stopped sinning because the Holy Ghost took charge over your life and you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. You stopped sinning because of the conviction that came upon you and you knew life just had to be better than this. I remember John Nicholson in his movie, he just got his, this is just as good as it gets. And I remember some of us had reached a point in life where we thought we couldn't get no worse. Oh, you not here? I know some of us can know what I'm saying. You know that if you walked under a snake's belly with a top hat, you wouldn't touch his body. Y'all better talk to me. And some of us here, oh, I know we're having church, and it looks like everybody got it all together. And we mostly do that on Easter because we think a, shoot, a suit is an example of how a person lives. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And my, my point here today is to point to somebody here if it's not but one person, you're living beneath what God called you for. You're not fulfilling your potential. If he made you the head and not the tail, above and beneath, you ask yourself, am I in position for God to bless me? When Jesus rose on Calvary's cross, when they raised him up and they said, you saved others, now save yourself. And I showed him Friday, he walked with a cross on his back. Hallelujah. Crown on his head. But all the time he got you on his mind. And when they said you saved others, now save yourself. He said, no, I'm going to wait till Victor get tired of the high chaparral. I'm going to wait till he get tired of the green bunny. Y'all don't want me to preach, do you? I'm going to wait till he get tired of crown raw. I'm going to preach now. I'm going to wait till he get tired of lying and cheating. Then when I get him where I want him to get him, I'm going to take everything he done and I'm going to use it for my glory. I'm going to show my power in his life. That's what the resurrected Savior wants to do with everybody in here. God did not die for me. He died for everyone in here. I don't care what your situation may be. I don't care how much the kinfolk talk about you. I don't care how much your past wants to haunt you. God died for you. Yes, hold me, Holy Ghost, now let me go. I'm reminded of a story of a little boy who had a little boat, and he made it, and he put a string on it, and he put it in the river, and the boat started drifting away, and the little boy, he's got comfortable. He sat under a tree because he had control over the string, and all of a sudden, the current came. And when the curtain current came, it started pulling the boat in the opposite direction. And he started trying to pull the little boat in. His care for it because he made the boat. Lord, help me preach now. And he started pulling the boat his way. And when he pulled it so hard, the line broke. And the boat started going down with the drift and with the current. And it started going at a speed that he started running. He started running along the shore. He trying to get his boat back. And finally, the boat was out of sight. He settled within and went home sadly because he had lost what he had made. And when he, he, one day he was coming from school and he looked in a store and he saw his boat in the window. He went in there and he told the man that owned the store, he said, that boat belongs to me. And he told him, he said, son, I don't know nothing about that. If you want the boat back, you're going to have to buy it. He said, how much do the boat cost? He said, the boat costs $5. He said, okay, the boy went home, broke his piggy bank, had a dollar and 50 cent, took some bottles to the store, got a dollar and some more chain, and worked until he got $5. And he went back and bought his boat, caressed the boat and hugged it. And he said, now I see that I have bought you twice. And that's just how God is. God has bought you twice. He don't have to buy you a third time. And I'm come to tell you that you didn't have to die from your sins. He came back. You were bought with a price. You are of a great value to God. 
And God actually don't ask you to live holy because he want to beat you across the head. He said, that is your power, that you walk up right before me and I will withhold no good thing from you. Ain't no need in talking about you broke. You ain't walking right. Ain't no need in talking about you ain't got nothing but headaches. Just walk right and let God answer his word and all you do is keep it. I'm going to preach now because I found out when I wasn't walking upright with God, I had a job. Lord, help me here. I had money, Lord help me here. But I couldn't keep none of it, Lord help me here. Couldn't keep stable, my mind was crazy, but somebody told me if you just give God a try, if you just stop playing church, if you just walk up right before him, see what he'll do, see won't he keep his word. Can I get a witness here? I can tell you one thing if nothing else, God has never failed. And all the times have not been easy, but God has always come through. If it wasn't a steak, I had a hot dog. If I didn't have no bread, I had some crackers. Y'all don't want to hear me. If I didn't have no milk, I had some water. Y'all don't want to hear me. The Lord always will and always has provided. I thought about, I thought about when I got up the other morning, I wake up at 3. I'm in prayer from three till I go back to sleep. Sometimes that's in the evening. This is what I do every single morning. You cannot pass the folk and too lazy to get up and pray about them and pray for them. God ain't going to talk to you at midnight. Now, oftentimes God want to wake you up when you want to lay down and just have a little talk with you. That's why he said, I sent my prophets to you. Rising up, Lord, help me preach early in the morning. And I got up one morning and I started talking to God. I said, God, how did this thing with resurrection go? He said, if you notice, when you turn on for the weather, it always say we got a breaking news report. And I began to see that's how it was when Jesus came. When Jesus rose from the grave, they had a breaking news report. It read something like Jesus, the son of Joseph, the carpenter's son, the one who confessed to be the son of God. The prophet, the one that healed the blind, made the lame walk. The one that, that well, you know who I'm talking about. Jesus, the one that say he can forgive sins. Jesus, the one that confused the scribes and, and made the Pharisees wonder if they knew what they were talking about. Jesus, the one that stood before Pilate and told him if it wasn't from my father, you couldn't do nothing at all. Then you know what I'm talking about. This Jesus that walked on water. Y'all know who I'm talking about. This Jesus that fed 5,000 folk. Y'all don't want to have no church. This Jesus that forgave the woman that caught in the act of adultery. This Jesus that made the shites to come up out of the tree named Zacchaeus. I'm talking about this Jesus that dealt with a devil in a tomb, cutting itself. Y'all don't want to have no church. This Jesus that the one that says, no man taketh my life. I'm going to lay it down. And on three days, I'm going to pick it back up again. This Jesus that was on the cross, talking about, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I'm talking about this Jesus that talked to what we know to be a lone thief on the cross, got nerve enough to talk about, this day thou be with me in paradise. I'm talking about this Jesus that we had pierced his side, this Jesus that we put thorns on his feet, this Jesus. That we put nails in his hands, this Jesus. That we put nails in his feet, this Jesus. That looked down at his mother and said, son, look at your mother. Mother, look at your son. This Jesus that when we thought we had him, he said, father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, this Jesus. A lady came by. Say she'd been by the tomb and he was gone. Tell somebody that his men came, his disciples, the deacons came and got him, wrapped him up, took him away. Don't let nobody know that this man is gone. Tell somebody them folk came and got him. And when you start telling them this, if the, if the, if the governor have a problem, we'll back you up. But this is one lie that's got to be told. Because if folks start believing that this man was raised from the grave, we'll lose all power, that we'll lose all authority because they're going to start believing. So if he lives, I can face tomorrow. 
The drunk ain't gonna get drunk no more. The whoremonger ain't gonna whoremong no more. The liar ain't gonna lie no more. The cheat ain't gonna cheat no more. The prison's gonna be up and they gonna be saved. We can't say this man that's been raised from the grave. The husband gonna treat the wife right. The wife gonna start reverencing the husband. Say this man. It's not risen. Say that it's a lie. Say that it's a joke. But I tell you, if you look at yourself, if you just think about yourself, you will see Jesus lives. You will know Jesus lives. If you just take a little look how he's brought you, a mighty long way if you think about if you think about how he protected your family in your absence if you think about how he put food on your table if you think about how he kept a roof over your head if you think about how he healed your body if you think about how he set the captive free if you think about how we rebuke the devourer for your sake. I'll tell you, can't nobody do that but Jesus. And it went by. There's a, we have a breaking report. He's not there. We talked to this lady named Mary Magdalene. First she opened up instead of telling us what we want to know. She said, I had seven demons and he delivered me. I pushed her to the side and I, I talked to a man named Lazarus. He said, I was dead, stinking in a tomb and he called me from dead to life and I pushed him away and I, I talked to another man named Blind Bartimaeus. He said, I ain't got time to be trying to explain this to you. Look at my eyes. I see where you're going. I see where you came from. He said, and I pushed him away. Then I found a woman that everybody knew was an adulteress. And I brought her in and I, I asked her about him. And she said, all I know is that he told me, go and sin no more. Praise the Lord. And so when I couldn't get that, I found a man born blind from his mother's room. He said, did you not hear me when I talked to the preachers in the church? When I said, here is a marvelous thing that has never been heard. Oh, I got somebody read the Bible. That is, since there's been a man in a life that a blind man being blind from birth ever received his sight. And he said, here it is. They didn't know and you don't know. All I know is his name is Jesus. And I think I got somebody here today that he done delivered from this, that he done delivered from that, that he done delivered from that, came and back, got you back out of this. Y'all don't have no church like this on me. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you something is that the cross holds up a standard. The blood of Jesus holds up a standard. If you notice something, when I was raised in Catholicism, that I walked around with the cross, it had Jesus on it. Lord help me. No, y'all don't want to have no church. But what happens here is that when I, got, when I got set free, I remembered something. That Jesus was crucified as long as he was up on the cross. And I don't carry no cross with Jesus on it. Because that means he's still on the cross. That means that he's still a curse. I don't carry no cross with my God on it. Because my God has been risen from the grave. Because in our, he sits right at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for my sins, your sins, and everybody in here sin. And I know somebody in here say, we don't sin. Mm -hmm. So next week. God. Thought so much of you. That he knew. And God tempteth no man a one man to sin, but that he knew 
the only way you would appreciate him, he let, he let you go in enough mess that you know only God could have brought you out. That you know only God could have brought you out. Going the wrong direction. No intention of meeting God where he tell you to meet him. Still want to go on with business as usual. Expecting to be blessed. God want to bless you. But he can't bless you if you're out of position. Demetri, I'm ready. He can't bless you if you out of position. He can't bless you. He can't bless you. There you go. And what happens? He blesses you where he wants you to be. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying? He can't bless us if we're out of position. Because we have to be where God wants us to be so God can bless us. Praise God. And if we're where God wants us to be so God can bless us, then God in turn comes right to our rescue and he blesses us with a blessing. Praise God. And I find that any time I'm not with God, and I'm asking from God. Ain't no need of me getting mad. Hell no might. I, when my amp was a guitar amp, the piano was older than me. When God was trying to start this great church, when the minds in the church were on the Lord, and he said, I'll keep thee in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me. No one should come out of a resurrected Sunday and go back to the same situation. They couldn't even stay in the ground in the graves when Jesus went to the cross. Everything has to change. It's the turning point of the Christian life. But if you don't know him as your Lord and as your Savior, you don't accept him like that. You know him as some fad. And you'll probably explain him away like everybody else does. Oh, but when you live for Jesus, Jesus in turn will bless you, bless your family, He'll bless your surroundings. He'll bless everything about you when you live for Jesus. Don't give me that crap that you, no one can live like that. God knows all about you. He's the Alpha and he's the Omega. Whatever God put in his word, he intends for us to live by. That's simple as that. And if you've been wrong, turn around and get it right. As long as you got breath in your body, you have an opportunity to get it right with God. Praise the Lord. And I'm telling you, it's something else. Don't wait till you need God. Know that God is always there. And when you know God is there, you know he's a delivering God. You know he's a delivering God. Somebody here today, you got problems with your finances and family troubles, worried about your job, health, more dependency on the doctor because he's smarter than God. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. That's not what I'm saying. I have a doctor. But you go to God first. You go to the Lord in prayer. And you believe God first. My very good friend just had five bypasses. He only got six you can have. And the doctor came in the room. And when the doctor came in the room, 
I had to look at him because I thought he was one of those people that, that helped, you know, will assist the doctor, right? But he was a brother and he was this big, about like that. Nice looking gentleman. And he came in and he said, I'm the doctor. I will be performing your surgery. My friend is Caucasian. He said, well, I hope your hand's going to do a good job. He said, my hands are not going to perform the surgery. He said, he said, the Lord is going to work through my hands for you. I actually heard that in the hospital. And if he worked through my hands, you're going to be just fine. You know what I'm saying? God showed me that to show me that he has people everywhere you go. God has somebody for your situation wherever you go. But you got to follow God's plan. Listen, listen, get in a good Bible church, come here, whatever you want. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. You may not like me for it, but I'm going to tell it to you. You cannot go on your job, as I might not see y'all again. Y'all going to bear with me? You cannot go on your job and do what you want to do. I do not care how bad they treat you. I do not care how much they mistreat you. Do not do it. Whatever you are called there to do, you make it your business to do it. Do you hear me? And quit stealing them pens and pencils thinking it don't matter. <laughs> listen. Listen now. That was just to wake you up. Listen. Listen. When I was at Zena 30-some years, I had a job 15 years that a man had went to a promotion, and he got the promotion. He, he's white, I'm black, and he went and got the promotion, and he decided to come back to the job. They had nerve enough to come and tell me, we want you to train him on the new process and let him come back to his job. I jumped up and said, I'm quitting. And God said, don't you quit this job? And I said, no, they doing me wrong. See, because by being sorry, you really don't have nowhere to go. And I'm sitting there, so I'm, I'm mad as fire. Man, I am started cursing, and I didn't know I knew them words. I wasn't saved then, so you watch what you want to tell me. A brother told me I, I, I was going to church like y'all. Go somewhere and play with somebody else. I bet y'all listen now. I was going to church like y'all, but I wasn't saved. And I read a scripture that says, do not work with eye service and lip service, but do as, they, as, they, as your leader and honor your people that have rule over you. Everybody that was my race, saved, unsaved, told me, don't you do that. You're going to give that when we in your job. You ain't nothing but a fool. Watch this. The Lord told me, teach him. I walked around and heard them talking about me behind my back. See, sometimes folk will take you the wrong way. And I heard them talking about me behind my back, but I taught him. Oh, I taught him. I didn't like it, but I, I did it anyway. Because, see, brothers and sisters, you got to give God something to work with. And I, and I taught him, and I taught him. And, 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 the, and the prince superintendents came and he said, we're going to make you another area that when, if you don't mind after your eight hours, you can stay here as long as you want and we'll pay you. I made $110,000 that year. I'll teach you if you want to learn something. So what, I, what I'm trying to get you to see, what I'm trying, that's just a small point of how I can tell you when you let your mind take you away from the word of God, you cannot expect the blessings of God. You cannot. It's not going to happen. Easter not going to do that for you. Easter don't do a thing for you. Matter of fact, it's a holiday. What the resurrected Savior in your heart, that's what will change your life. That's what will change your life. And I worked and I worked and I worked, and man, it was like I, I, I couldn't believe I was being blessed like that. But then it came time to tithe. Here comes somebody else want to lead me down the wrong way. See, every avenue that you have, I don't care whether it's your love one, your life, or whatever you may do be doing, you make sure that at the end of your destiny is Jesus. 
and you go in the path that the Lord has given you. And I couldn't do it, so I, I went to the currency exchange and I, I gave my check to this lady and I said, every, every other week when I come in here, take 10% out of this check and write it to this church. She got to the place she was saying, ooh, you gonna get a shirt 300, 500? The Lord was blessing. I couldn't do it. But I went to someone and I said, once you put it on a cash, on a cashier's check, or what is a currency, and you put their name there and stamp it. In case y'all want to tab that way. And you and you stamp it, that's their money. And God gave me a home. I had never lived in a house in my life till I was 34 years old. Always lived in somebody else's apartment, somebody else's building, somebody else's this, that, and the other. God gave me another new car. It wasn't that he didn't gave me one previously. I just didn't know how to pay the note. See, when it's resurrected in your life, when God restores things, yes. oh, I'm, I'm trying to talk to somebody. Yes. Everything, don't sit up in here like you ain't lost nothing. Talk about, I don't want nobody to know what I'm going through. It ain't their business what you're going through. Let God know. Yes. And if God say this is resurrected Sunday, ask God, God restore back to me. Yes. And then I'll serve you till I die. Yes. And God start bringing things back. Bringing it back. Yes. Bringing it back. Then came the time when you really needed God and your son is on, death, on his deathbed and a machine is keeping him alive. You better know that you know God. The same God that can give you a car can restore somebody's life. The same God that can give you a car can keep you covered with the blood. The same God. It's in the, it's in the little things. It's in the things that you think don't matter. It's in the things that the devil been robbing us from that we thought was so immaterial. We thought didn't nobody see us. God sees us. If other than that, all that he did on the cross is voided out because you won't do the simple thing. Simple thing. Simple thing. Married at 17 years old. Girl got pregnant. I married her. That's why I'm like I am about that. Didn't last uh, two, three years. Because somebody led me.